I guess so. We ready to do this? We're ready to do this. Hello there. I'm Fitch Forty. And I'm Alra or Simon, you know. And today we're gonna do our much awaited blood result tests. Yeah man. We've done a blood test results. Blood test results. Yeah, we've done a blood test results. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago. In Belgium? And in Belgium, then? yeah, because the labs are a little better here than anywhere else in Europe, I would say. So And then in Poland we had a leading hematologist, which is a blood doctor, look over our results. So the results are commentary on the results. It's not just something we googled on the internet, it's actually his professional opinion. Yeah. So We've done the blood results because there were a lot of people interested and me personally I was also rather interested to see if I didn't have any deficiencies and so on after two years of being fully fruitarian. So only fruits, no vegetables, no salt, no concussions, no fat, not that much fats, although durian is rather fatty and I ate a lot of durian, but rather clean, right? Mm -hmm. Like completely fruits, nothing else than fruits. As for me, I was doing a 100% fruitarian diet for the last two years and the two years before that I attempted a fruitarian diet which resulted in 95% raw and before that I was an omnivore like everybody else. And the funny thing is for the last 10 months since we met, we actually ate the same thing at every meal, meaning we ate the same fruits but also the same amount because I eat no less than Simon, right? <laughs> so this is actually a very interesting experiment. And today we decided to talk about my blood results, even though our results are very similar, because it's much harder to have good blood results when you're 38 than when you're 25 like Simon. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, also my blood results were kind of very good. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah, so there's no deficiencies whatsoever in my blood results so that's why we look at justina's blood results because there are some more interesting more things, interesting things to discuss in there okay let's get started i'm gonna take on the first one the most interesting one to everybody which is glucose see what the question we get is if you all eat all this fruit isn't that too much sugar you're ingesting in the diet? Sugar has had a lot of bad press in the last year. A lot of people have made claims it causes diabetes. So with my diet, which is 95% carbohydrates, I eat sugar, right? If anybody should have diabetes, it should be me, right? Because I get all my calories from sugar. And here's the thing, right? Our results for blood sugar level are incredibly low. Mine is 80, while yours is 78. Whereas, you know, anything under 100 is great, and 100 to 125 is pre diabetes, and over 126 is diabetes. So, here you go, here's the results. You can eat all the sugar you want for two to four years, and your blood sugar level is very low. Why is that? That is because diabetes is actually. The disease of excess fat in your blood, what happens when you eat animal flesh, as in meat or dairy products, the excess fat in the blood binds to the insulin receptors, rendering them useless to bind with the sugar molecules, right? So the insulin receptor is coated with the fat and cannot bind to the sugar molecule. The sugar then stays in the blood and is unable to move into the cells giving you high blood sugar, which can then lead to diabetes. So my advice is, eat all the fruits you want. That's very good advice, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where did you learn that advice? <laughs> anyway, second most important thing that we think on our blood results is, they actually call it, I'm not sure, but a fat test or something like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you can do like an only blood test for these kinds of things. and. What I want to say is the cholesterol values. So first of all, you have total cholesterol, right? That's where most people look, uh, look at, it's serum cholesterol. But that's actually ridiculous, that it doesn't say anything. It says if it's high or low, but you cannot get any explanation out of it. You have to look at HDL and LDL. HDL is also called your good cholesterol. LDL is called your bad cholesterol. Why is it called like that? So HDL, is actually the cholesterol that takes the bad cholesterol in the blood and transports it as some kind of car towards your liver and your liver gets rid of excess cholesterol. So you want a high amount of HDL. 
And then the LDL you want as low as possible because LDL is the bad cholesterol, which means in your arteries, together with fat and calcium, it will form a plaque on the side of your arteries. So if your blood has to go through a smaller opening, right? It's very bad, right? Because you want your blood to have the maximum volume possible pushing through and through your heart, otherwise your heart will get weak, right? So what happens is, if you have a high HDL, it doesn't mean your blood work is good or your cholesterol is good. Because for example, if your LDL is super high, your body will naturally produce more HDL to cover it, to balance out your cholesterol. But that doesn't mean that your cholesterol values are good, right? What you optimally want is a normal HDL, not a high, not a low, and a low LDL, right? That means your body doesn't have any problems with covering the LDL, right? The bad cholesterol. Anyway, as you can see, our values are like so what are epically, our values? epically good. Well, our values are, I have 148 for total cholesterol, which says nothing. She has 168 for total cholesterol, which also doesn't say anything. But anyway, the HDL, you want below 60. And you can see here that I have 67. No, that's impossible. Anyway, you can see on the results that we're gonna project right now. And you can see that our HDL is perfect within the normal range and our LDL is actually very low. You want between 100 and 130 to be safe and below 100 is really, really good. And Justina has 90 and I have 78. Unbelievable. So my bad cholesterol is almost not there. It has to be there because you have to balance out, right? But it's so low, it's so, so good. Epic results. And then there's another one which is called triglycerides. And your triglycerides is another fat in your blood. It's different from cholesterol. It's the fat that stores in your fat cells and it actually gives your body energy. And a high value of this triglycerides is directly linked to heart diseases, to cardiovascular diseases, increases the risk of heart diseases, right? As you can see, our values are also perfect right here. Okay, on to the next one. A super interesting one, especially for vegans and vegetarians out there, vitamin B12. It is said that as a vegan, you cannot have any sources of B12 in your diet because most, on the most part, they come from animal products. But I pray to argue that B12 deficiencies are not limited to vegans or vegetarians. Actually, more than half of Americans over the age of 50 have B12 deficiency. Back in the old days when we lived in the jungle, right, the human body produced vitamin B12 and when you're pooping, you're getting B12 on your fingertips and into the soil. And then when you're picking fruits or veggies from the soil, right, you're ingesting the B12. Now that everything is so hygienic and the soils are depleted, the sources of vitamin B12 are pretty much scarce. They're right? non-existing. They're pretty much non-existent, right? So the result was this, Simon's B12 was within the norm at 245, my B12 was 162, with the norm being anything above um, 190? 190, I think, right? So yeah. mine was below the norm, 97. but just below the norm. And this might be due to several reasons, one of them being that I have a history of non-assimilation of B12 running in the last two generations of my family. So it's very likely that from a genetic standpoint, my body is not so good at retaining vitamin B12. However, after consulting the hematologist, he told us that my B12 is just under the border, so it's nothing to worry about. Definitely not a cause to take injections. To see if, um, if I feel any better, although I objected that I already feel epic, right? He prescribed me an oral B12 supplement, 1000 milligrams of methyl cobalamin. Methyl cobalamin. Methyl cobalamin, which I'm gonna take every other day for a month and then twice a week for two months. And then we're gonna take another blood result and see if the B12 increased, right? However, he did say that vitamin B12 is such a complex thing that it actually a low B12 level, right? Affects all the body's pathways, right? including also the assimilation of other mineral oils like calcium, iron, 
Um, folate. Folate, right? What, yeah. what was the other one? Sodium, right? And looking at how high my results are for all the other, um, for all the other stuff in my blood, he knows that there's no bad effects of the slight B12 deficiencies since all my other results are so good. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I guess your vitamin B12 levels are getting up and up with each year of being fruitarian but we have to check those blood results of course i think her b12 just dropped down dramatically when she was a meat eater well i don't know we're gonna see that we, we're gonna see anyway that, yeah. we'll keep you posted if taking the oral supplementation of b12 will bring any results to my b12 levels but then again i repeat that if it wasn't for the history of non-assimilation of b12 in my family the raw result was not enough to make me have injections and if it wasn't for my family history I probably wouldn't even take the oral supplementation. Yeah. Anyway, it has nothing to do with the diet because it has to, to do with the diet of course if you have enough B12 but we've been eating exactly the same, exactly the same in the last 10 months. Maybe I ate a little more durian. Maybe 5% more durian, yeah. right? <laughs> but if it had something to do with the diet he would also have a B12 yeah. deficiency. And I have perfect values. so. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> okay, on to the next thing. Yeah, the next, the next ones are gonna be a little less important, you know, but they're still very interesting to look at. So first of all is iron, right? Nowadays we can get iron in fortified cereal, we have to eat meat to get our iron, you know, there's a lot of myths around it. And if you, have, if you don't have enough iron in your blood, you're gonna get anemia, right? You're gonna, your skin is gonna turn more white. Um, so iron is also very important because it produces hemoglobin, which actually carries the oxygen in your blood. And that's very important for athletic performance and for brain function, because the more oxygen, the more function and the more performance you can expect, right? So her iron levels are 82 and the hematologist in Poland, the specialist in blood work, actually told us that that's like a young man. He said it was so good, she made her iron as a young man in her blood. So that's epic results, right? Okay, on to the next one. Next one is folate. You might be familiar with folate as folic acid, which is actually a synthesized um, ver version a supplement, right? And pregnant women are told to supplement on folic acid because it uh, prevents neural tube defects in the babies. However, the new studies actually prove that folic acid can lead to prostate cancer. So the only way to get it is folate, is to get it in fruit. And another name for folate is vitamin B9, also known as the happiness vitamin, right? High levels of folate are known to increase your happiness levels. But on a molecular level, folate means the creation of new cells, right? So. It means a high level of folate means your body is regenerating faster. And here's the thing, our folate levels are like over the roof. Like the norm is 3.9 and ours is over 20, which means our, the creation of new cells is proportional to that of a young baby. Yeah, you actually have to know the folate in adults is between 5 and 20. The folate in children is between 5 and 21 and the folate levels in infants, so babies, is actually between 14 and 50. So we're in that category. Yeah, so crazy. that means our cells are regenerating as fast as a baby's cells are growing and its functions and everything is growing, right? So our mm -hmm. body is really doing an epic job at regenerating and at detox and stuff like that. I want to take the next one. I'm going to take sodium okay. because we eat a salt-free diet of only fruits, right? And the low levels of sodium can lead to nausea, vomiting, dizziness, right? But the whole population has the opposite problem. They have high blood pressure due to excess sodium in the diet. And it turns out that eating just fruits, we have the sodium exactly spot on in the middle of the sodium range. So you can eat no salt and you can have the perfect sodium result. Yeah, that's an epic result. Man. Yeah, man. I always thought I needed salt. That's complete bullshit, man. Salt is for Talking the fish about and the bullshit, let's talk about protein. Yeah, protein <laughs> is the biggest bullshit, you know. They all say, where do you get your protein from, bro? Right? And it's so ridiculous, man. I eat about two 
to 5% of all my calories a day from protein. And I still get more than 40 grams of protein or even someday 70 grams of protein if I eat some avocados or durian here and there. So just eat your fruits and you're gonna have protein. You can see on the, on the blood results, my protein is absolutely perfect. Absolutely, nobody asks the gorilla or the hippopotamus, right? Where, do, where does he get his where protein? Where do the animals that you eat get their protein from? Where does the cow get from its the protein? From the grass, Absolutely. from the plants, from the fruits. So why would you eat actually the, the dead meat if you can eat the grass, right? Uh, we don't say we you have, have to eat grass, the grass, but you can eat vegan with Speaking ease. of other myths, there's one more that I want to touch on and that's calcium because you remember the the campaigns where you had the milk moustache, right? Like you need calcium for strength, so for strong bones. That is actually the myth. The, the bigger the dairy consumption in the population, the higher the osteoporosis curve in the population. And osteoporosis is, you know, the, the disease of weak bones in the elderly age. And we eat no dairy products whatsoever. And as you can see, our calcium is spot on, both Simon's and I in the, in the middle of the range. Oh, not only that, we don't even eat leafy greens and vegetables, which are high in calcium, which is what a lot of vegans do. We're saying you don't even need to eat dark leafy greens for your calcium. You can just eat sweet fruits and you're fine on the calcium Yeah, front. and I want to pick up on that because it, it comes towards the next result, which is TSH, which means thyroid stimulating hormone. So how does it fit in? You have an endocrine system, which is all your glands. It's your thymus, it's your pineal gland, which is called the third eye. Um, it's your parathyroid, it's your thyroid, it's your adrenal glands. And these are all connected through a system, a very complex system. But the thing is, if one of these glands doesn't work optimally, the other glands will not work either, right? So your thyroid is actually the one who arranges, um, the, who balances out the hormones in your body, right? So if you drink, for example, dairy, which is milk or mm -hmm. cheese or whatever, That's right? Or even eat meat, these <clears throat> hormones that have been ingested in the animals to produce more or to, you know, sedate them so that they don't get wild or whatever, these all come in you and it disrupts your thyroids. And once your thyroid is disrupted, your hormone balance gets out of shape, right? And that's why you get hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. I had it as well. And that's when you get polycystic ovaries. That's when you get excess hair on women. Yeah. That's when you get acne. Yeah. That's when you get skin colorations. Yeah. That's when Eczema. you get... Um, anyway, yeah. so many diseases, man. And the thing is, with the calcium as well, your thyroid and your parathyroid are linked in the endocrine system. And your thyroid regulates the hormones, so this one is disrupted by the dairy, right? Or by the meat. And your parathyroid is also disrupted, right? Because they're in the same system. And your parathyroid is actually the one that regulates the calcium in your, in your body, right? And that says, okay, these bones need more calcium, this needs more calcium, I have to take away calcium here, right? So what happens is, if you eat, uh, eat meat or you ingest dairy, your calcium is not going to get there. So they say you have to eat dairy for calcium, but it's the opposite. You, so have, to you dairy have to avoid dairy for, for calcium. For calcium yeah. And you have to actually eat the fruits, which is the well, simple conclusion. Know. Yeah. So anyway, you Anyone. can see our blood results are absolutely phenomenal. Actually, you know, the, doctors, the doctor was actually curious what diet and what lifestyle yeah. we eat to get such blood results. And you know, the blood results were in um, Dutch, right? Yeah. But he was a Polish dude who could actually figure them out. You know, he had a good knowledge of the language, right? And I could see his geeky smile. He was going like, ooh, that's like that. Oh, you know, as he went down the results yeah. and he was writing it down in his notebook. And I could see the enthusiasm on his face. They were very stoked. Look, he was stoked to look at our blood results. So this is the conclusion. 100% fruitarian diet gets you all the nutrients, right? You can argue it doesn't get you B12, but Simon's example proves that you can get all the B12. And yeah, I probably have sure. some family deficiency, not family um, flaw of non assimilating the B12. And I'm gonna see how the oral supplementation yeah. works. But other than that, all the results are epic. Anyway, 
later on we're planning to have our own orchard and we're just gonna poop and pee all around the trees you know and then if the fruit falls in our poop we're gonna eat it just like that it's gonna be delicious of course there's gonna be heaps of b12 when you come and visit us in the <laughs> <first> time <laughs> okay that's okay it, huh? so we don't plan to change our diet i plan to be fruitarian for the rest of my life yeah. what about you i'm only gonna get healthier and i'm gonna live years longer than i would normally live yeah and years happier Comment below, we're gonna film the, the whole results so you can, you know, uh, just right now. I yeah, just pause, pause the video if you want to see our results in detail. And yeah, everything's out there in the public. You know, if you're impressed with the results, go wrong. Just <laughs> start eating fruits and never turn back. Okay, we did everything to keep this video short so we're not gonna make it long Yeah, now. it's already fucked, I think. See ya! Bye! Okay, so this is for the blood results from them. Um, what are you doing here, man? Uh, this is actually what is this? This is actually epic ketchup that Simon's dad made. <laughs> so wait. What are you doing? Man? Shut up. Oh yeah, that looks like blood. N that much? Yeah, man. Are you gonna eat it afterwards? Yeah. <laughs> blood results video coming right. Well, it has to be. Oh, the true. knife. The knife has to be in it. Oh. Yeah, like that.